Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the gracious, ever merciful. Assalamu alaikum, dear viewers. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon you. Welcome to tonight's nice lecture organized by the UK Talim Department. As per our tradition, I would, we would like to start the program with the recitation of the Holy Quran. I would request <coughs> Abdul Sami Sahib to do the Talawat and its translation. Zakala Aslam Lekum Ramakula Arudu Billahimina Shaytan Rajim Bismillahir Rahman. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اسْعِرِفْ Anna Rabbana Zurif Anna Azaba Jahannam Inna Azaba English translation of the verses just recited before you are is as follows. I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the accursed in the name of Allah the gracious, ever merciful. And the servants of the gracious God are those who walk on the earth in a dignified manner. And when the ignorant addresses them, they say, peace. And who spend the night before their Lord, prostrate and standing. And who say, our Lord, avert from us the punishment of hell. For the punishment Therefore, is a lasting torment. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Uh, <clears throat> tonight, we have the pleasure of being joined by Misar Orchard Sahib. Um, he's uh, serving as Tarbiya Secretary for Amdiya Muslim Association UK. As always, there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions towards the end of the program segment. Please type your questions into the live chat and kindly keep them relevant to the topic. It gives me a great pleasure to hand over to Nisar Orchard Sahib to deliver tonight's lecture. Jazakallah Shakil Sahib. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. 
Uh, respected viewers and listeners of today's session, I would like to give you all a very, very warm assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And the pleasure is all mine once again, and I'm delighted uh, to be asked to come on this, on this prestigious platform to once again to share with you, hopefully, a few words of wisdom. Um, before I actually go into the main subject matter, I just want to first of all say this is, I can't remember what number, 164th lecture or so today, okay, something like that. And, um, and you know, alhamdulillah, you know, it has established um, this particular program so well that uh, it's, it's always well attended. And um, my only wish is that out of all these lectures that we have heard, you know, they're educational, full of guidance, full of substance. And it's always good to acquire knowledge. But what I am, um, let's say, to want a better word, concerned with is that, you know, whatever we take in within all these lectures, we should also be practical, you know. There's an English term that, you know, we, um, um, uh, we talk the talk, but now it's time to walk the walk, you know. We have to be practical. And inshallah, I'm, uh, I'm sure that most most of us, inshallah, all of us, you know, we are practical in our ways. You know, we are all on the same journey. Some people are ahead of others. Some people are behind each other. We all going for that common spiritual peak. You know, some are quicker than others. But again, as I said, in order to reach that spiritual peak, you know, we have to be practical. And I hope that today's um, session you know, I can, you know, give you a few, you know, inspirational words so that you can, you know, um, it can inspire you to higher levels and uh, of, of being practical. If you're good so far, from good, you should become better. If you're poor, weak, from weakness, you should become good and so forth. It is never, ever, uh, um, it's, a, it's an endless road of progress all the time. So let me try my bit today in order to try and, you know, let's be practical in our ways of life, okay? And today's subject matter, the title is How to Be a Servant of Allah. I must say from the onset that, you know, I am certainly not qualified for this, but I will give it a go. How to be a servant of Allah. I want to split this question into two, actually, to begin with. You know, the first half is how to be a, and the second is servant of Allah. What is a servant of Allah? But the thing is how to be, okay? Now, look, it's like anything else. If you buy yourself a new washing machine, if you buy a flat pack covered from Ikea, it's going to come with instructions, okay? How to operate the machine, how to fix the cover. You have to be practical. Likewise, in order to be a servant of Allah, you have to be practical as well. Just because you are born a Muslim, you know, I'm sure if I would say to you, are you a servant of Allah? You'll probably say, yes, I am, okay? But let's find out through this course how much of a servant you are. And also, I'm not forgetting, this. The, all these questions are also directed to myself as well, okay? But anyway, as I said, you'll get a manual instruction set, operating guide for a washing machine. Do we have an operating guide on how to be a servant for Allah? Yes, we do. Here it is, okay? It's called the Holy Quran, okay? We should be in the habit of picking it up every day, reading it and listening to, uh, sorry, reading the, uh, the, um, the guidelines and also the many commandments that are in here for us to be a servant of Allah. Also, another manual instruction for how to be a servant of Allah. I've chosen this other one. It is the book from the Promised Messiah, peace be upon him, the philosophy of the teachings of Islam, okay? So I've already given you two manuals, okay? Two operating guides in terms of how to be a servant of Allah, okay? Who is a servant of Allah, okay? Probably straight away if that question is asked to you, you'll probably point to the Khulafa, we'll probably point to our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. But actually, this is for you. You can be a servant of Allah. You can reach those high spiritual peaks in order for you to be deserving to be called a servant of Allah. 
Servant of Allah is not reserved just for a few, it is for everyone, but you have to put a bit of effort into it. As in the Talabat just read, you know, the first verse uh, in Al Furqan, uh, verse 64, it mentions a description of the servant of Allah very briefly. And the servants of the gracious God are those who walk on the earth modestly. And when the ignorant address them, they say, peace. Now, already that this one simple verse gives you a profile of what a servant of Allah should be like. They should be walking in this earth modestly, dignified, with humbleness and humility. These are characteristics that are part of taqwa, and they should be mirror reflected in our behavior. Now, you know, modest and simplicity and humbleness, that's, um, I believe, the bad, bad condition number seven. We should remove our egos from our life and we should replace it with ajizi, with simplicity, with humility. Now, we all have egos, some bigger than others, but we should get that pin and burst it, okay? But sometimes egos get in the way of, of establishing um, good relationships amongst our fellow human being. And ego is not part of a characteristic, it's not part of us to become a servant of Allah. So therefore, and the servants of the gracious God are those who walk on the earth modestly, and when the ignorant address them, they say, peace. In this life, you will get all sorts of people that you will be dealing and meeting with on a daily basis. You get um, people who um, are easy to deal with, who are pleasant, who are polite, but you're going to get ignorant people, difficult people in life, expect it, but you should not lower yourself to their level. Again, in this verse, what you should do, you should say salam to them, you should say peace. That's how you should go about your life. That is the profile in a nutshell of the servant of Allah. But let me carry on, okay? Now, let me again share more profiles of how a servant of Allah, of God, should be. Um, now, you know, we should guard and protect our minds, how we think, because that our minds, if kept clean and pure, um, will that will reflect on our character and our attitudes. So what are the entry points of our mind, okay? Obviously our eyes and our ears, okay? We should be careful what we see in everyday life and we should be careful what goes into our ears, okay? So the servant of God should give minute attention in the different ways concerning his relationship with his fellow beings. Foremost is the proper control of his thoughts which are the seeds of human attitudes and behavior. Foremost is the proper control of his thoughts, okay? So make sure your mind is like a filter. You know, you filter out the bad and you keep the good in, okay? Because these are the seeds of human attitudes and behavior. The mind is similar to fertile soil. It produces whatever is planted in it. Man is the gardener. You are the gardener of your own mind. He is, you are free to sow seeds of your own choice, which will grow and flourish externally in, in accordance with the kind of seeds he planted, okay? So whatever goes in here, you are in control of. He, so basically, we want to plant the seeds for yourself to become a servant of Allah, to be deserving to be called a servant of Allah. Just by default, you're a Muslim, does not make you a servant of Allah. You have to work at it. And it depends on what you plant in your mind. You know, he also has the capacity to remove whatever weeds or bad habits or bad thoughts that may appear in your mind with the help of God. Man, you yourself, is the owner, master, and captain of your own soul, destiny, character, and even your circumstances. You are in full control of what goes through your mind of what is going to be cultivated in your mind. So, and also you're in control of what you can remove from your mind. So basically, as I said, the two entry points I've mentioned already are your eyes and your ears. 
what goes into your mind, and that will determine your conduct and your character. But of course, we just want holy thoughts, good thoughts in our mind, okay? And the servant of God selects, sows, and cultivates holy thoughts with the help of God again. He should be ever ready to pardon and forgive an injury caused by someone else and endeavor to show compassion to the person who has caused it. He should endeavor to harbor no feelings of hate whatsoever, and if his emotions are aroused, he should try to subdue through earnest prayer and positive thinking. You know, we are human beings, and some, you know, this is why, you know, jihad, there's a jihad, jihad severe and jihad kabir. You know, the jihad, the, the jihad severe is the battle that you fight actually on the field with your swords and with your guns. But the jihad kabir is the battle of your nafs in terms of, again, developing a, a, a healthy mind to reflect good conduct. Islam teaches that in the event of a dispute, one should refrain themselves from confrontation. It should, you should, once uh, the event the event of a dispute one should resume talking within three days people do fall out okay but at the same time you know islam teaches you you have to be practical you have to again as i said burst your ego and say sorry uh, we apologize the initiative would go a long way in restoring a friendly relationship which may grow even stronger okay so again you know worship is not just down to your formal five prayers a day. It, a form of worship is establishing good relationships between people. And here, you know, you should be ready to show compassion to the person, even if you're not at fault, okay? You should assume you're at fault. But again, all this is harnessed when you have positive, holy thoughts in your mind, as opposed to thoughts like anger and revenge and so forth, okay? We will just create a further dispute and more disharmony. And again, that is not the characteristic of a servant of Allah. You no know, love and hate, you know, that's our motto, love for all, hatred for none. Again, the servant of God should cultivate love for everyone, although it is not expected that his depth of love would be the same for everyone. You know, some people like others more than others. It is natural to love some persons more than others. But the endeavor, however, however, you should be you should be love for all, hatred for none, which was the motto of the third Khalifa, Hazrat Mirza Nasir Ahmed Ramullah. So therefore, the servant of God should look upon all as brothers and sisters. He should overflow with sympathy for all in need, misfortune, pain, or suffering from any kind. Okay, so remember. You know, you should overflow with sympathy. You should sympathize with people. You should even empathize, try to understand their problems as opposed to condemning them, okay, for any wrong, for any wrongdoing, okay? Again, that's another characteristic of the profile of a servant of God. Now, we are human beings. We do have our weaknesses, and we probably have sins as well, okay? But again, this is a great example of the promised Messiah. He said, the servant of God, you know, you, but everything I say, I'm referring to you because you can be a servant of God, okay, to that high level that's expected of an Ahmadi Muslim. The servant of God hates the sin in man and not the man on account of his sin, okay? The promised Messiah, peace be upon him, once said that despite the fact that drinking alcohol is a sin in Islam, that he found one of his friends lying drunk in a street, he would not hesitate to lift him up and take him to his home. He had many foul mouth opponents, yet despite this, he declared that not one from whom he had not prayed at least three times, okay? So look, as I said, you're going to get difficult people. In the, in the ayat that was read out in the Talabah, you will get uh, ignorant people, but sometimes ignorant people, they do have good points. And maybe you should focus on the good points of such. I know these things aren't easy, okay? This is why this is the jihad kabir the big jihad of your soul. 
Now, continuing on, another characteristic of a servant of God is being fully aware of his own unworthiness. So me, you, you should always consider yourself, we are nothing. We have achieved nothing. So we continue to strive and strive to get to that pinnacle peak of, of virtue, of morality. So basically, so remember, be fully aware you know, of your own unworthiness and that you, you are totally dependent on the grace and favours of God, okay? Whatever you do, it's not, it's not in vain, but it's all down to Allah. This is why you have to serve Allah if you want to be called a servant of God. Is ever thankful for whatever spiritual fruits God has bestowed on you. He, he despises nobody and displays courtesy. And again, these are more characteristics, okay? Walking again in the Talabat, walking, being dignified. He despises nobody and displays courtesy and forbearance towards everyone. He is the well-wisher of all and considers himself the most humble servant of God in constant need of spiritual purification. We, we, never, we think ourselves so unworthy. Whatever efforts we have put in, you have to consider there are no efforts. That's why we have to keep striving and striving for which you hanker and you yearn for more and more spiritual purification. This is an endless process. Now, with these um, words I've just shared with you and setting a platform, the characteristics of a uh, servant of God in which, you know, you can attain, the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, he has further actually said the meaning of the word ibadi, my servants, okay? My servant, the meaning of it is those people who believe in Allah, the exalted, and the holy prophet, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. These are the people who are Ibadi, my servants, and are thus close to God. And those who do not believe are distant from God. Okay, So two things here to be an Ibadi, a, a servant of Allah, is that you have to have full belief in Allah and you have to believe in the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. God has stated that in order to become his true servant, and I'm sure you said, yes, I am a true servant of God, okay? But listen to this line. God states that in order to become his true servant, his every commandment, every commandment should be obeyed. Think about it, his every commandment. Can you guess how many commandments that have to be obeyed? Every commandment the promised Messiah said. Well, I believe that in the Holy Quran, okay, there are about 700 commandments in the Holy Quran. And the promised Messiah said, in order to arrive at this state, to be a servant of Allah, every commandment, 700 commandments. Now you're probably saying, this is out of my depth. How can I follow 700 commandments? Okay, This is why I'm saying that self-purification never ends. You always consider yourself unworthy. You have not achieved something. You should keep striving and striving and striving to fulfill all those 700 and it doesn't get any easier either. On top of the 700 commandments, you have the 10 conditions of birth, yeah? So it's going up and up and up. Being, being, a, being a Muslim seems to be difficult. But no, these things are fairly straightforward to carry out in life. This is the jihad akbar. 700 commandments in the Holy Quran and the 10 conditions of birth. So out of the seven Quranic commandments, I'm going to choose just four that you are all familiar with. And you should ask yourself, okay, what level are you at in these four commandments, okay? So after I share these four commandments with you, you have another 696 commandments still go to go through in order to call yourself or be deserving to be called yourself a servant of Allah, okay? So the four commandments are, we were commanded to pray, we're commanded to fast. We're commanded to spend in the way of Allah in terms of financial sacrifice. And also I've chosen another one, modesty and farda, okay? These are four commandments in the Holy Quran out of the 700, okay, that we are supposed to exercise, to observe, and to perfect, okay? Prayers and righteousness, again, 
it's, it mentions Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya Hayyu al-Nasu abadu rabbakum al-lazina khalaqakum wa lazina min qablikum la lakum taqtakun. Um, chapter 2, verse 22, O ye men, worship your Lord who created you and those who were before you, that you may become righteous. Righteous is the fuel for a servant of Allah, okay? So prayers is one commandment, okay? Again, there's quality in prayers as well, okay? We should look, look, look after our prayers. We as Muslims, this is a standard exercise. There's five prayers a day. Avoid taking shortcuts. Avoid joining prayers, okay? Avoid saying prayers late. Give focus to namaz, okay? That's where, when you can reach that peak um, of spirituality quicker as a servant to Islam. Then there is fasting. Again, why do we fast? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya hayyu al-lazina amanu kutuba alaykum as-siyamu. Kuma kutuba al-lazina min kablikum la lakum taqtakum. Again, chapter 2, verse 184. O ye who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you so that you may become righteous, the fuel to become a servant of Allah, a servant of God. Again, I've just touched on two, probably what two of the main commandments in the, uh, for a Muslim to carry out, prayers and fasting. How are you doing so far on these two things? Think, you know, you know, it's a rhetorical question. Ask yourself, is my level of prayers up to scratch? Is my fasting during Ramadan and also during during the rest of the year? And the sunnah of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, is to fast, I believe, on Monday and Thursday. Are you doing that? Again, if you are, these are fuel for the servants of Allah. Okay? Be practical. Get into the habit of fasting. Don't just wait for Ramadan to come and make sure you look after your namal. Five prayers a day, on time as prescribed. Let me give you two more of those 700, okay? Financial sacrifice. Here again, never shall you attain to righteousness unless you spend out of that which you love. And whatever you spend, Allah surely knows it well. Again, righteousness you will get by making financial pledges and sacrifices. Alhamdulillah, Vakfi Jadid year just finished, okay? We, we, the UK became number one, and we even increased it from last year during these so-called difficult times when people have lost jobs out of earnings, but their level of iman or faith is still so high. So Alhamdulillah, you know, Jamaat Emdi always responds. Again, financial sacrifice, you know, you can still be better in financial sector by promising more next year, okay? And number four, modesty and parda. Modesty and parda. Haya or parda, okay? Well, this is um, very, very important in you know, our social lives, in our work lives. We have to uh, care for our parda. It's another clear commandment in the Quran. O Prophet, Tell thy wives and thy daughters and the women of the believers that they should draw close to them portions of their loose outer coverings, okay? Again, you know, women can be servants of God as well, okay? And again, this is a clear command for women how they should maintain a dignified level of parda wherever you go, whether it's at a, whether it's a Jamaat meeting for Lajna, whether you, whether Lajna you go to work, whether you go to college or, or, or university, you have to maintain a level of parda, okay? And that level of parda in your daily life is as follows. Islam stresses the relationship between the body and mind. Women to wear an outer covering, draw their head coverings over the chest and cover their faces. Our beloved Hazur has defined the minimum Islamic parda as wearing a loose-fitting outer garment a headscarf, draw their head coverings over the chest, face makeup uncovered, but without, so face may be uncovered, but without makeup, okay? And modesty in dress, remember modesty at the beginning, those, those servants of Allah, of the gracious God, they walk in this earth with modesty and dignity. So your dress should be modest with arms and legs covered, okay? So this is for Lajna again, 
This is again fuel for you to become a servant of Allah. Oh, by the way, men, you don't get away with it that easy because Barda came for men first before women in the Holy Quran. Okay, it says, Say to the believing men that they restrain their eyes and guard their private parts. That is purer for them. Surely Allah is well aware of what they do. Again, men, whatever environment you find yourself in, whether it's a social environment, work environment, um, in, in a Jamaat environment, again, the purda for men is to keep your eyes down, okay? And avoid wearing tight, hugging kind of fits, you know, to, show, to avoid showing bulges and so forth, okay? You also have to wear decent, acceptable clothing as well. This is for men as well, okay? So again, these are four commandments I've just given you, okay? You know, prayers, fasting, purda, yeah, uh, and the other one was, if I just remember, just going back, um, it says uh, financial sacrifice. So again, but 700, okay? You know, you're probably saying, this is too much for me, it's too difficult to be a Muslim. No, it's not, okay? It is with earnest uh, work and effort, you can get to those pinnacles of, or, or, or in order to reach, and to call yourself, yes, I am a servant of Allah. Now, again, I, can't, I don't have time to go through all seven commandments. Uh, I've given you four so far. But look, the ten conditions of birth also, okay? You know, we as Ahmadi Muslims, this is the foundation of our life. And we should know what the ten conditions are just like that. If someone asks you, what is number three, what is number seven, you should be able to give them answers like that. Ten conditions of birth, you know? Number one, shirk. Avoid shirk, Okay. Number two, avoid all other sins. Number three, prayers. Be diligent in your prayers. Number four, do not cause injury in others' creatures. Number five, you should expect hardships in this world. You should bear hardships in this world. Number, number six, avoid vulgar customs and evil inclinations. Number seven, the number seven, you kick out pride and ego and you replace it with modesty and simplicity and humility. Number eight, uh, this, is, this is in relation to Akukala. You should protect the welfare at all times of Islam. Number nine, Akukul Abad. You should look after the welfare of your fellow human being. And number 10, you should establish a brotherhood with the promised Messiah, with Ahmed, peace be upon him. Such a relationship you should have with him that's closer uh, than your husbands and your wives and your children. These are the 10 conditions of birth. You should know it just like that. Again, this is fuel for you to become a pure servant of Allah. Get to know it, okay? You should know them, okay? This is the basic. You should know what the 10 conditions are. But knowing is one thing, but you should be um, applying it and implementing it in your life. Always check yourself. Check yourself at all times. You know, what are we expected to do in life? You know, in order to get to that stage. Um, there is a hadith which from Hazrat Thoban, Allah be pleased with him, relates that the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, when you find the Mahdi perform bad at his hands, you must go to him, even if you have to reach him across ice-bound mountains on your knees. Ice-bound mountains on your knees. He is the Mahdi and he is the Caliph of Allah. You know, that's how much um, importance and uh, and the, and and and, and, and the, um, position that the Mahdi was thought of. Go on your knees over ice, but we aren't expected to do these things. We've actually got it pretty good. We don't have to go on our knees on ice-bound mountains. Okay, you know, Alhamdulillah, from the promised Messiah came the blessed. Um, and uh, the, 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 uh, the, the blessed uh, a series of Khalafat. And, um, and we are blessed with that even till today now. Now, the promise of Khalafat as well, you know, in Surah Al-Nur, Ayatul Istikhlaq, you know, it also promises us Khalafat, okay? It says, Allah has promised to those among you, okay? He's promised, but there's two conditions. You have to believe and you have to do good works. You know, your level of Iman always has to be high 
never give in, okay? In whatever condition you may find yourself in, you know, in difficult conditions or good condition, in, in, in easy conditions or in, in sad conditions, happy conditions, you always have to maintain your level of belief at all times and do good works. Every day we have opportunity to do, to do good works. Every day. Now, today, it's already about nearly nine o'clock now. We're coming to the end of another day. It's dark outside. Ask yourself, what good works have you done in order to fuel yourself, in order to be deserving to be called a servant of Allah? You do not get that by default here. If you want the to stay with us, your level of belief has to remain high and you have to continuously to do good works. Now, I just want to quickly take you back, okay, to December 2016. Now, that was the last Friday sermon of our beloved Hazur. And he actually went through the previous year of 2016. And he, he asked many, many questions of us. And I'm going to share some of these questions with you. Again, they're all rhetorical questions. And ask yourself, you know, we love Hazur, but are we carrying out Hazur's instructions in order to really, really call yourself a servant of Allah? Um, again, even though it was 2016, we can still apply it to this year coming. We've just started a new year. And let's look back to your previous year now. Let's look back, okay? You know, Hazur asked me more than 30 plus questions on that particular khutbah, the 30th of December. And I give you reference to it, the 30th of December, 2016. Look it up in Al-Islam, okay? You know, and, um, and I'm going to share some of these with you. And as I said, they still apply today as they did apply four years ago. The first question, Hazur said, did we fulfill our promise of abstaining from shirk? Yeah? You know, shirk obviously is associating partners with Allah, but there's different forms of shirk as well, okay? If you put your television, a program, a film, your drama before namaz, you said, I'll say my namaz later, that's also a form of shirk, okay? So avoid that now, okay? Hazur asked you, Hazur said, did we fulfill our promise of abstaining from shirk? This is all part of bed condition number one. Hazur also asked, did we spend our year completely free from lying? Okay, Whether it's a black lie or a white lie, or a big fat juicy lie or whatever, Okay, a lie is a lie. Even lying in a joke okay, is not permissible. If you lie in joke, you're setting bad habits. Okay, It is not part of being a servant of Allah. Azur asked us, did we protect ourselves from the trespass of the eye? I've already talked about farda earlier. I talked about modesty. Okay? And modesty applies to both men and women. Azur actually asked that question in December 2000. Did we protect ourselves from the trespass of the eye? It is not a characteristic of a servant of Allah. Azur asked, did we try to protect ourselves from all immoral deeds? such as backbiting, slander, jealousy, you know? Sometimes th these may um, um, uh, resonate with you, okay? You know, people love talking about other people, yeah? That tends to constitute as backbiting. Of course you can talk about other people, but in a good way, okay? But remember, backbiting, slander, jealousy, and many, many board habits, Azur says, did we try to protect ourselves from all immoral deeds? Again, as we'll continue to say, did we protect ourselves away from all acts of cruelty? Again, bad condition number four, we should not injure anyone, okay? Did we? You know, whether it's physically or with a, a harsh word, sometimes words can really, really injure uh, people, and that's also an act of cruelty. Did we try to protect ourselves from all kinds of conflict? Conflict. Sadly, you know, this is why I mentioned a couple of times earlier the jihadi kambir, okay, is your nafs, okay? We should be getting on with people as opposed to falling out. You know, husbands and wives, you know, sometimes they fight with each other. Parents and children, there's tension between them. The Azur said, did we try to protect ourselves from all kinds of conflict? That's bad condition number nine, akukul abad looking after the welfare of our fellow human being. 
Our wives come under that. Our husbands come under that. Our children come under that. Our neighbors come under that. Our work colleagues come under that. Always have a good relation. Remember in the ayat uh, that in the Talabat that started, and when you and, and when the when when the when 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 the ignorant address you, you know, you should say salam to them, peace to them, okay? You should not say a bad word in return to them. Did we keep ourselves safe from any rebellious thoughts? Okay. Again, do not think bad of anyone. You know, and um, again, there's so many questions. Here's another one. Hazur said, were we unbeaten from our passions? Passions. You know, we should not get allow our passions to get better of us. Okay. Emotional passions. Um, um, we sometimes from emotions, we may get angry and so forth. We should keep our passions checked at all times. Um, we have a but now sometimes we may have a passion for for a sport for a game. We spend hours and hours and hours on it. Okay, we should be in control of those things. Do not let things get the better of us. Do not let our passions get the better of us. Again, another question, Hazur asked: Did we offer our five daily prayers? Hazur asked you that question, okay? And servants of Allah, they do five daily prayers. You ask yourself. I have to ask myself as well, okay? I always check myself, you know. I have to practice what I preach. Ask yourself. Azur is asking you, did we offer five daily prayers? That is a characteristic of a servant of Allah. Again, if I just quickly run along, and I'm noticing the time now. Again, there are so many others. And uh, did we try to adopt humility and meekness? Um, again, did we try to leave pride and vanity? That's bad condition number seven, okay? You should remove your ego and replace it with humbleness and humility. Hazur is asking all these questions to you. So anyway, I, it's, it's, there's so many more, and I, 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 I put your attention to the last Friday khutbah of 2016. And, um, and, and at the very, very end, Hazur actually said when he asked the questions, there was one final question. Oh, by the way, another question Hazur actually asked that day was, were we attentive towards offering the hundred prayers? The hundred prayers. Bed condition number three, okay? You know, the hundred prayers, you will see your mosques are always full up, okay, on the 1st of January. Why? What's, the, what's so special about the 1st of January? You should get into the habit of reading the hundred prayers as well. Again, if you look at the full description of bed condition number three, it mentions the hundred prayers. Worship is not just for one day. It's not enough. We have to keep doing these good deeds throughout the year, not just for the one day. And at the very, very end, Hazur, our beloved Hazur, said that if most of the answers to these questions are in the affirmative, if they are yes, then if most of them are yes, then this then the year previous went well, despite some weaknesses. We are human beings. But if most answers are negative, then do special prayers that Allah Almighty may forgive your failings and may Allah enable you to gain more and more in the new year that's just started and count you amongst those believers who are always ready to sacrifice everything in the way of Allah, and those believers are the servants of Allah, and you can be amongst them. To sum up, to sum up, an Ahmadi is a soldier of Islam, an ambassador of Islam, a preacher of Islam, a servant of Islam, a defender of Islam, and an embodiment of Islam. This is what you are, or this is what you are supposed to be, and it's never too late to get to these levels. But the last one I mentioned there, an embodiment of Islam, when you have reached that level, then you will find complete solace, peace in the bosom, in the chest of Allah Almighty. And when you're at that stage, you're at that top stage of uh, that's mentioned in the philosophy of teachings of Islam, that you start at the base stage, nafs amara uh, which is the animal stage, then nafs um, nafs lawama which is the moral state, but the servant of Islam strives and strives to get to that stop to that top stage, which is called nafsi mutmahinna. When you are at one with Allah, you are at peace. 
And here, just to quickly finalize now, to sort of sum up, this is the stage that you should be at. The words of the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, says, God becomes his eye with which he sees, his tongue with which he speaks, his hand with which he repels attack, his ears with which he hears, and his foot with which he walks. At that stage, you are at one with Allah. Never give up, keep striving, and yearn and hanker for that spiritual and nectar, okay, that will take you to the peak of the summit. May Allah enable us to carry out our duty diligently, and may Allah enable us to fulfill the instructions of our beloved Khalifa so as we can reach higher levels of righteousness. Allah Ta'ala hame apne piyare aakha ke arshadat par amal karne ki tafeeq ata farmaye taake hum taqwa ke ala miyar ko hasil kar sakhe. And again, I really, really do hope, Chiga, there are words of advice and guidance, but it's the practical element of it. Have a look at yourself. Where are you falling short? So you can um, um, refuel yourself to get to those higher levels of righteousness. May Allah enable all of us to do so. Jazakallah once again, uh, Shaquille Sahib. Um, Jazakallah, Mr. Um, Sahib, for such an inspiring and very comprehensive uh, lecture. Um, you've gone through so many things in order for the viewers to reflect on the importance of serving uh, to Allah or become the servant of God and how to be one from the, um, the commandments and from all sorts of the references you gave. Um, the viewers, there are so many compliments are, are on uh, live on the chat talking about how a mashallah, very beautiful lecture. It says there, it talks about it's very impressive and inspiring. So, and the some of the questions which people were asking uh, were already kind of answered. So, for example, one question was, How do we achieve love of God? If you want to recap it again in a summary, that was one of the questions. Please do so if uh, if you're okay with that. Just uh, oh, that was a question. Again, you have to recognize what you are first, okay? You know, first and foremost, you are a Muslim, okay? And to me, you have to be deserving to be called a Muslim as well. And to be to be, to be a, 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 an Ahmadi Muslim, okay? You know, probably the, uh, the most important virtue out of so many virtues that you can acquire from love and respect and patience and sympathy and kindness and generosity and gentleness, the biggest, most important virtue is zikrullah, the remembrance of Allah, wherever you are, wherever you, Allah is always with you at all times. And whether you're sitting on a bus, you're sitting in a classroom, you're waiting in a queue, if you remember Allah, that is a sign of Allah, okay? And, you, and again, to remember Allah is not a difficult thing. This is bad condition number eight, yeah? Uh, looking after the welfare of Allah. You know, that love that you have for Allah, if you can remember the time when you got married, okay, at the very time you're fresh, you know, you know, if, if speaking about to a man, if you, you know, you probably couldn't take your eyes off of your wife. When you're at work, you're, 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 you're rushing home to see your wife and so forth, okay, yeah? Now, that same love, you have the same love for Allah, just like how you have for your wife, or I should say as well, just like how you have for your husband as well, okay, yeah? Do you have that same love for Allah? Do you want to rush home and say your prayers and prostrate in front of Allah? That's what you should be having if you really want to call yourself a servant of Allah. Everything else is secondary. I'm not saying everything else is not important. Of course, everything else is important as well going to work and making money and so forth. But at the same time, the most important thing is the love of Allah um, and, and the virtue is the, is, uh, uh, the zikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah, wherever you are. Never ever abandon Allah. Allah is always with you as long as you remember him. Jazakallah uh, for that. Jazakallah um, for answering that and recapping um, the, the importance of that. Um, dear viewers, uh, thank you for watching. 
the program, please let us know, uh, the Talim team, what lectures would you like us to cover, particularly the topics you wish to recommend. You probably see the email at the bottom of the uh, screen there. Um, and then thank you for watching this, our online lectures. Please don't forget our Urdu lecture next week, um, which is on Monday and on Tuesday, our English lectures on those usual time. Um, can I request um, Ochisap if to lead us in our silence prayer, please? So my last few words are be safe and be happy. Be safe and be happy. Please join me in the silent prayer. Dua kalim. Amin. Amin. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum.